Hey guys, so I'm Chris from Velocity EP. I'm the technical director there. I also handle all the tuning and technical support. So if you've ever received a file or had any technical support issues, I was your guy you were dealing with. So that's my introduction. Now to what we're dealing with. We've actually come up with our own coolant ports for the Audi 3.0 TFSI supercharged cars. Um, and what I mean by that is this. So basically you have a crossover pipe that normally goes here in like a ABS plastic and it's got one feed, one return, and it marries off to both banks. So we've noticed that that actual pipe inside the diameter feeding to the intercoolers is actually about nine mil or so. It necks down quite a bit and the supply is actually around 14 mil. So we've measured the size of this, which is actually uh, 14 You've got our 5 8 hose coming right now. So we've got 14 here, 14 here for inner diameters. 5 8 hoses. Uh, we've got our feeds. We've got our returns on both sides. Same here, feeds and return from the intercooler. And we're basically divorcing the banks, right? We're not divorcing them from the engine, per se, but we're actually divorcing the banks on this. We're bringing this all the way down, bringing it back along the crush bar all the way to the side um, and we have two pumps that we're running you can hear them running right now we've actually snipped the pulse wire so we're running a uh, constant 12 volt to it uh, both pumps like i said and reason for that is we're running them actually in parallel so one per intercooler um, if you want to call it like that basically we've got coolant temp sensors going to return and feed uh, the intercoolers so one for the one for feed one for return on the left and one for feed one for return on the right now this is actually a 2012 b8 and we are running a b8.5 heat exchanger stock heat exchanger on the bottom um, mainly because it's a dual pass it makes this easier for us and on the top we're running a stacked unit this is nothing special it's uh I don't know, $50 to $100 Alibaba special. Uh, we cut off the brackets that were on it, flipped it 180, welded the brackets back to it. That way we can mount it. And reason for the flipping was to get the drain port as the bleed port, right? So basically instead of having to weld on a bung, we just decided it'd be easier to weld the actual brackets, flip it and weld them, right? So why are we doing this? Well. We noticed that there was a lot of people complaining about uh, the actual, you know, does a stacked work, does uh, upgrading to a larger heat exchanger like the ones from 034, Merck Racing, uh, ECS, uh, any of those guys, uh, they all make fabulous units, but does it actually work just adding more fins, more surface area to cool, or does the extra volume of fluid help? Meaning, you know, if you installed like a reservoir, uh, a larger reservoir would that work versus the larger units um, one thing too is a lot of these units on the top so the upper part of the crush bar uh, the crush bar or crash bar whatever you want to call it there's no shroud right there's only the shroud that's for the main radiator but there's actually no shroud that is on the sides of the the heat exchanger so on the bottom you've got these nice plastic rubber uh, pieces shrouding the, the air so basically the air is coming in uh, folding into uh, same on this side it's getting caught coming in and going it's deflecting through the actual fins or channels to use whatever you want to call them on the top doesn't matter what we have right it's going to be going around and in most cases it's going to take the easiest path or the the less restrictive path which basically it can go up and over versus just going through you can put the fan on hope to pull through but what is it actually doing so we're, we're trying to help prove uh, this with you know does a stack unit work? Does OEM work? Does the larger ones work? Like I said, and then we have our temp sensors running to see the fluid to and from. So we have a temporary setup right now. We're running basically generating wires going inside the car. We have our own 3D printed little pod that we did. We've got our uh, inlet temperature to the, in heat, the intercooler, sorry, and the outlet temperature from the intercooler. So we can monitor the actual temps. I know it's hard to see this in the video. Um, it's much better in person. And again, it's just temporary. We've got a auxiliary wire for this one, the cigarette lighter doing this. Um, it's kind of janky, but it works. It gets it done. And we're going to be doing quarter mile testing to see if does this actually work. And 
one of the main things that we want to try and see or try and prove. Um, I don't know if we can do this with temp sensors, but so actually see if the fluid does one lap in the system. When you're doing your quarter mile, you got 10 second cars, 11, 12 second cars, two pulleys, whatever it may be on the mods, but does it take, or how long does it take for that fluid to get through the system? Does it take 20 seconds, right, to do a full lap? Who knows? Does playing with the actual uh, speed of the pumps change, right, uh, for better or for worse? You know, does the intake air temperature better when it's running at 100% speed, or is it better uh, more at the factory standards, whether it be 40 or 60% duty? Um, those are things that we're gonna try and prove. Now, we won't be able to really check um, if it does a lap with just the temp sensors, um, unless we're monitoring temp, maybe we can figure a way. I think it would be more reliable if we added, or reliable data, if we were to add a die to it, um, basically on the feed, pump the fluid through and have the exit afterwards and see you know, how long it takes to actually go through and count it in seconds, stopwatch, whatever. And then, you know, if it takes 14 seconds to go through, you know, you would have done your quarter mile in that time, right? Um, so yeah, we're, we're basically trying to gather some data information, uh, educate the market on this, and hopefully we can uh, provide back this knowledge to the community. So you might be seeing a couple of videos of this, or maybe this is a failed video and you don't see any more, but uh, I think this is something cool, especially with these ports. Um, allowing it like this it basically mirrors like the aftermarket like magnuson stuff like that where you've got independence and this also allows you to run something like uh i don't know intercooler uh, uh sorry the uh the killer chillers or interchillers stuff like that um and you can separate them per bank so instead of running the big the big uh the big interchiller stuff and you're cutting apart your crush bar to try and fit that thing because it's massive um you can probably run two small killer chillers right you run those small units, you run them in the firewall area, loop the, loop the hoses back there, and you wouldn't have to run that big piece. If you were running that stock uh, ABS pipe on there, you wouldn't be able to, or you could, you basically run it in series, right? Wouldn't be any beneficial to it. Uh, maybe, maybe not. But with this, you can at least run those two separate pieces. You can have one per bank, and you're guaranteeing that that cold air, or that cold fluid, should I say, is going to that side intercooler, right? So if you notice you're getting a hotter temperature on one side versus the other, you can sort of diagnose that, uh, whether it be the primary leading bank being hotter or who, who knows, right? So anyways, this will help actually give us more data um, to look at and see where, where we need to go with this. So I hope this video again was educational and you guys like it. Uh, if anything, give us a thumbs up and uh, catch you next time.